Hey gang, I got something for you. We all know email marketing is one of the few activities that directly leads to sales for our businesses. I love sending messages to my list and watching the responses, leads, and sales come in day and night. But email marketing has been beaten and bruised by a lot of shady marketers over the years. That's why I listen to a podcast called The Email Marketing Show. Robin Kennedy teaches psychology-based email marketing in a way that is enjoyable for you and your subscribers, making email valuable and extremely effective. The show is fun, no matter what your email savviness might be. Subscribe by searching for The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or visit emailmarketingheroes.com. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. It's Seth. I am here today with Jess from Hello Luna. Oh, wait, it's just Luna. It's HelloLuna.com. Luna. Yeah. Just Luna. And it's Luna with two L's. Jess is on a mission to personalize the future of work. And we're going to ask Jess a little bit, what is Luna exactly? Thanks, Seth. I'm excited to be here yeah, with you fun. today. So Luna, we're a B2B SaaS technology platform. We focus on making it easy for companies to offer employees a more personalized employee experience. So what Ooh. that means is hey, guess what? We're all different. And what we need changes over time. And it's really challenging to meet everyone where they are or to please everyone. And one size fits all policies really in this day and age just are not cutting it any longer. So our technology makes it simple for companies to say, hey, here's some choices that you can have for a specific period of time. And so pick, maybe it's around schedule or work location or working days or professional development and even things like work style and team culture related questions and choices. And ultimately, this is empowering employees to feel like they have more control, more say over their own employee experience. Mm -hmm. And it's taking the guesswork away from employers who typically have it's you know let's create this big policy or implement this big program and Mm -hmm. instead of doing that you can just ask your people what they want and let them tell you imagine imagine if you ask instead of assuming something just imagine that that. (laughs) what a concept there's nothing else out there like this and it's it's bizarre that this is i mean i looked around i mean there's some there's some hr things do some of what you guys do but it seems like you're like a full suite. Yeah, I I joke that before launching Luna, I searched to the end of the internet. I actually looked mm-hmm. at every web page imaginable, and uh, like you said, I couldn't find a technology that was really bringing the employee experience together in one place that made it simple for employers yet engaging for employees. We are the first of our kind, That's and certainly awesome. there are overlaps with other other technologies, other people technologies that are out there. But we're really trying to change that dynamic between the employer and employee to create better outcomes, better productivity, engagement, and certainly talent employees. attraction yeah. and retention. Yeah, retain people oh because you're meeting them where they are instead of them saying, hey, I need something different, so now I need to leave. Yeah, keep them happy because, you know, the great resignation is not good for anybody. No, no. So, Jess, so how did this all get started? I mean... Did you wake up one day and say, I have an idea for workplace retention? Or is it like, I'm sure there's more of a story to this. Like, let's start, let's, yeah, let's start your entre- I mean, when did your entrepreneurial of. journey start? How okay, that? so my entrepreneurial journey really started when I was about 10 years old. And I started oh. my first job inside my dad's company. He is an entrepreneur. So I it runs in I the worked- family. I worked every job in his uh, manufacturing business for most of my my upbringing. I also had a pretty lucrative lemonade stand back in the day. So um, once got asked if I accepted credit cards. So I like vividly (laughs) remember that moment because I was like, it must be good lemonade if you want me, if you want to pay me in a credit card. Um, But really, (laughs) I didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. There was no there was no square. Those things didn't exist way back in the 80s. (laughs) Um, So but really, 
Seth, I've spent the better part of the last two decades as a management consultant. So working mm-hmm. with global, mostly pharmaceutical companies, but also some health systems, um, predominantly in the healthcare space, but focused on the people side of projects. So mm-hmm. organizational change, org design, strategic planning, how do you take your culture and use that as a magnet for talent into your organization? And how do you use it to motivate people to achieve these big goals that we want to accomplish inside businesses? Oh, wow. I, so you've been at this Luna thing before Luna even started, pretty much. Oh, pretty- yeah. So I would say Luna is the culmination of my life and career experiences. And... I love that. You don't really recognize it when you're going down your career path or your life path. But as I look back and hindsight being what it is, it's certainly and, you know, it's it's kind of like, oh, yeah, this all makes sense like that. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So the the consulting experience led me to eventually actually become the chief people officer inside a management consultancy. So is that like oh, player turned in, coach? You went in-house. I went in-house. And really, I think the the recognition was that I got it. I got what it was like to be the consultant in the, as part of the business. But I also understood how to motivate people and how to do things mm-hmm. in a way that connected people to the core of the business. And so Absolutely. it was around that time, it was definitely around that time that I had also become a mom. So Aww. I you know, had a child. That, that's um, a lot of, ma- that's already right there is management consulting. Yeah, right, you're managing right. Your kids. Jeez. Yeah, now, now fast forward, I got three of them now, oh, so geez. it's real oh, management wow. consulting. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. Time and place is everything, especially in marketing. But today there are millions of messages per minute and not enough hours in the day. How do you catch your target audience's attention? One word, LinkedIn. LinkedIn can help you speak to the right people at the right time. LinkedIn has become number one in B2B advertising in the U.S. With LinkedIn, you can stand out against your competitors, nurturing customer relationships, and growing your brand. LinkedIn delivers you quantity and quality. Its targeting tools allow you to reach precise audiences down to their job title, company name, location, and more, which means your ads are being seen by those who matter most. Scale your marketing and grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than their competition, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. To get this credit, go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. So I, I was reflective. I had my first child. I was thinking about what's important to me. How do I want to spend my time? And, and I really looked back on my career And I realized that what I wanted or needed from my employer changed throughout the Mm -hmm. arc of my career. And at that point in time, it was, hey, I can't work a 14-hour day without batting an eye anymore. I need to, you know, go take care of this tiny human. I want to make time for my family. So how do I do that? How do I remain a top performer and also have a life that is fulfilling for me. And then I started noticing a trend based on clients I had worked with or people who had worked with me that were leaving jobs for what I felt like were avoidable reasons, who Absolutely. were frustrated about the lack of transparency around, you know, what professional development opportunities really are available to me or hey, these policies no longer serve me, so I'm going mm. to move on. And it, it just felt like a missed opportunity. So that really paired with Hey, the world we live in today is so hyper personalized. It really we, is. Yeah. We, I joke all the time. I'm like, okay, we can personalize our coffee orders, and they're delicious, by the way. We can very yeah, expensive too. It, the more you it, it does add. Yeah, it does add up. It does add up. <laughs> but we can personalize those coffee orders. We can personalize medicine and science, but we don't look at work that way yet we spend so much time there and I think people have for a long time been like all right let me how do I fit this how do I fit life into work and Mm -hmm. for Luna we believe work should be designed for life and recognizing you spend most of your time at work I mean that's the thing so you might as well make it work and think about like so when when employees have permission to set a boundary or adjust Mm -hmm. their schedule to work for their life priorities. 
they are less stressed. They are more engaged. They are happier. They're not distracted by like kind of the structure around the work. They, they can just do the work. And that's Absolutely. really what we're bringing into the market. And it's amazing. It's, it's amazing it's, that no one's ever come up with this, but it looks like this is made for you because of your experiences, you know, going, do, seeing all this, back, this backlog, you know, you know, over the years doing, your, you know, being an exterior consultant, you know, being out to be an entrepreneur and seeing all that stuff, then going in-house, having your kid, your first of three kids, and realizing that, like, this needs to be personalized. It isn't. It, this like Luna is almost made for you, even. This is kind of cool. I mean, perhaps I I'm the one doing it, so yeah. um, I think you're you're probably right to an extent. But I'd like to believe that it's made for everyone. I think oh, everyone I talk to is is like, yes. Why don't we work this way? Why is it it's so amazing. one size fits all? Why is it a box? And I wonder if it's more of America. It also seems very American to be one size fits all versus like I feel like Europe might be a little bit more Luna esque. I feel like Spain they have their siestas, yeah, and in in the Nordics they you know it, it's very much flipped. Then, yeah, but in the United States we're like workaholics, and it feels like we, it's a prime. It's prime for Luna. It seems like it, it's time. Yes, yeah, it's definitely time, and I think we're seeing that in the market. That mm-hmm. you know, honestly, like the pandemic was terrible for a lot of reasons um, oh, gotcha. that we all know. But it was good for us because mm-hmm. people did reflect on what was important to them in life. And Absolutely. we were all sort of on the edge of, you know, experiencing those life or death scenarios. So it was, you like, know, a good, real. Yeah. Po- real, like good point of reflection for everyone and an opportunity to rethink the way that we're engaging at work Mm -hmm. and we're seeing the the employee side of it dramatically Mm -hmm. with the great resignation where they're they're you know speaking with their feet and they're saying okay we're gonna walk out the door speaking with their feet i love that. yeah or i'm gonna leave i don't want to stay here and what's been interesting is it's waves there's definitely waves of it and different um different new trends are triggering new responses for people so right now something that's i think um been pretty polarizing are the return to office policies Mm -hmm. and no one seems to be doing it right they all try and they're trying i mean to do something to their credit they're trying they are but they're failing miserably they really are. And so there's, there's two ends of the spectrum where mm-hmm. it's too much of a policy, which is muscle memory for HR, right? Oh, They're yeah. like, let's, okay, let's put a policy in. Let's go do a policy. And they, it, they're one size fits all. They're, or they're, that's what the, the, the goal is. Mm-hmm. And by saying, okay, everyone's going to come into the office on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and be remote Monday and Friday, that is people are like, even if that works for people, it still rubs them the wrong way. Like, how dare you tell me what works after Why two are years you of doing me? my own th- our own thing? And hey, it worked this yes. other way. Yeah, yeah, I miss people, but let me come in when I want to come in. So, in our technology, a company could say, "Okay, we want everyone to come in on Wednesdays. Pick two more days of the week that you'd like to come into the office. Guess what days they're going to pick? That. Tuesday and Thursday." It makes sense. If you want Tuesday and Thursday, you ask for Wednesday and ask. Because it makes sense. I mean, if you're on a roll, you're right. not going to so want just, Friday. And you're yeah. not going to want Mon- Mondays are miserable. Mondays are right. terrible. And maybe there are some outliers who say, yeah, I want to be in on Fridays or I want to be on Mondays. But generally speaking, if all, all of a sudden you change the d- dynamic completely because you're saying, okay, Wednesdays, we're all going to be here because we want everybody to be like in one place for at least one day a week. Pick two more days that you'd like to come in and, and connect and collaborate with colleagues. And then when an employee is saying, I want to be there Tuesday, Thursday, they're, they now feel in control of that decision instead mm-hmm. of being told that's what you need it's to do. It's so psychological, but and it's simple. And yes. it's simple. It's not that so hard. You only, honestly, you don't even need Luna for that, for crying out loud. You just you, need to use your brain. So you don't, although what, what you do need Boy. Luna for, <laughs> what you do need it for, Seth, is that in Luna, now you have the data to mm-hmm. see – 
what people have decided, what it looks like at the oh, aggregate wild. level, what it looks like at that individual level so you can better engage and coach your team. So this is a leadership opportunity oh, as awesome. well. And the other end of the spectrum right now is, okay, you can work from anywhere you want, anytime you want, any day you want, just get your job done, which is sounds great, right? As in it, it's very it's, it plays almost like the ultimate, like have, spent, have had as many vacation days as you want. No one's going to take any because yeah. they're going to be scared. Is this a trick question? Well, the thing is, there's no data tracking that. Mm -hmm. It's teams trying to self-organize on like, okay, when are we all actually working? Is there any (laughs) consistency to it? So what we bring is more of a structured flexibility instead of this like really shapeless kind of whatever everyone wants to do kind of mentality. So you've got this structured flexibility that mm-hmm. creates clarity and alignment and expectation setting. It's awesome. And yeah. it's been fascinating to see how both companies and employees engage with the technology and how they feel as a result of using it. And that, that's really what gets me most excited. That's, that's fantastic. So here's the question I ask everybody. What is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Oh, what is the most important thing I carry with me all the time? This is a wonderful question. I think I it's also a tricky question. Oh, it's so tricky. And, and the, the variety of answers I get, are, it goes everything from, everything from the physical to the metaphysical. And I'm like, some people go like way out there. So no pressure. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to give you two answers. You ready? Ooh, a twofer. The... the First one that pops into my mind when you ask this question is determination. Mm. I carry determination with me all the time because I, I like to believe I've got some grit and mm. I am really determined to help people change their mindset and the way we are approaching work. And mm-hmm. so determination for sure. The other thing I'm going to share is kind of silly, but like I always have chapstick with me. If I don't have chapstick nearby, it's so necessary. So like I I start to get a little panicky if I don't have chapstick nearby. So chapstick. You got got the metaphysical and the physical. Perfect. There we go. There we go. I I love it. (laughs) And what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur and being the CEO of your own company, your own startup? The best thing about being an entrepreneur is being able to build. It is Mm -hmm. like... You see the vision, right? It's that lighthouse in front of you. And you're like, I know I can get there. It feels really far away sometimes. But you see it. And knowing that like block by block, process by process, minute by Mm -hmm. minute, you're building towards that ultimate lighthouse is just really energizing for me. I think in my DNA, it's how I'm wired for sure. Yeah, building something and seeing it like start from a seed of an idea to actually being a thing to actually helping people's lives improve is so fulfilling. And on the flip side, what's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? Oh my gosh. Just Just one thing. Gosh, this the scariest thing is probably the constant uncertainty. Yeah. I like to think that I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. That's sort of my management Who consulting is, training. Who is? Right? No, but I I sort of am. Like being put in those challenging situations where like you've got to kind of problem solve and peel mm-hmm. it all like break it all down and put it all back together. Like I love it. Well, that's cool. But there's a <laughs> she there's a me. The thing is that like the ongoing uncertainty, especially at an early stage company like Luna, is that it's an all the time thing. It's not points in time. So I think that can just become sort of draining when you're like, oh, my gosh, like today we're uncertain. And that's not to say that I'm uncertain about the long term success or opportunity, Mm -hmm. but more just day to day. You don't know about hiring or customers and conversion or Mm. is this message going to work is this going to land and a lot of a b testing (laughs) all of that yes so where can people find more about you and luna with two l's luna with two l's so the name just so you know why is it two l's and what's the story behind the smiley face oh perfect um thank you for your question so luna 
two L's, is a nod to the moon. So the moon goes through different phases, and so do people. We need different things at different times, and we need different things from our employer as our Mm -hmm. career evolves. The extra L is for life. Oh, I like and that. then the smiley face, if you notice, is a little crescent moon smile. So oh, is. that yeah. is kind of tying the name into our icon. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. So people Thank can you. find you at hello luna with two L's dot com, right? Hello Luna dot com, double L double L. And yeah. um and, you know, LinkedIn, for sure, mm-hmm. feel free to connect with me via LinkedIn. Would love to hear from anyone that's listening and wants to chat more about the future of work or personalization or oh, yeah. anything that Luna's focused on. Absolutely. And we'll have your link to your LinkedIn. Jess, thank you so much for being on the show. And we'll see everyone next week. Thank you, Seth. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. Another great MPN podcast you'll enjoy is PR Talk, a show that digs into the modern side of public relations through interviews with thought leaders, authors, and the media on PR Talk with the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.